We are live. Let's start then. A second. Yeah. Okay. Hi, guys. Okay. And welcome back to another episode of uh, Nerd Squad. Okay. And instead of reviewing a book today, we are going to review a course which is very close to our heart here at Positive. And uh, this course, uh, the course is called as CrossFit. And we are going to discuss today uh, a bit about CrossFit, a bit about uh, uh, why I think that it's a beautiful course and why we should, uh, why it's a fantastic course to do. And the third thing we are going to discuss is how do we integrate principles of CrossFit into rehabilitation. Okay, so there are three parts to our today's lecture. Okay, first is what is CrossFit? Uh, second is uh, how do I, how, why do I think it's great for physios to learn CrossFit? And third point is uh, why, how do I integrate it in? Yeah. Okay, chalo, guys. Okay, so we start with what is CrossFit? Okay, and just bear with me, just bear with me till we uh, uh, come to the rehab part. Okay, because I am very sure there will be a lot of questions. I'll quickly go through uh, what is CrossFit and why I think it's important and we discuss the, uh, the rehab part, okay? And I want all of you to start sending your questions and Pratna can collage them and ask me in the end, okay? So guys, what is CrossFit? Now in textbook definition of CrossFit, it is basically nothing but constantly varied functional movements at high intensity, okay? Again, constantly varied functional movements done at high intensity okay now let's let's look at all these three terms egg by one by one okay so first thing what we let's look at the term called it functional movements now what is functional movement functional movements are movements which we see in normal life okay now let me give an example of what are functional movements okay so we we always say that movements such as a squat uh squat method of getting up from a chair is a squat for us a uh, hip hinge a uh, hip hinge means getting uh picking something from the floor is a hip hinge a push, a pull, a rotate, a single leg are examples of functional movements. In the same way, uh, movements such as a push up, a pull up, a lunge, a dip, a climb, and a get up are slightly higher intensity but still functional movements. Okay, things such as walk or run, throw, jump, bike, row, swim are functional movements. So when I'm saying functional movements, I'm looking at movements which we see in normal life. Okay. So let me tell you, so there are some characteristics which we find in functional movements. And that is that first and foremost that these movements are absolutely natural. Yeah. Okay. They are natural. So what do I mean by natural functional movements? Okay. That is, let's say, let's say if this video opened up, okay, you all came on this Zoom meeting and you saw me doing something like this. Okay. And you would say, uh, I, I don't know what this guy is doing. And you would say, uh, maybe this is not the right place for me to be here. Okay. But on the other hand, if this pain was lying on the floor, okay. And I picked down and picked that pain up. Okay. Which is basically a deadlift. You would say, uh, maybe you are just clumsy, but you would not feel unnatural. Okay. So this movement, which we say functional movements are something what we say is absolutely, absolutely natural. Okay. And as physiotherapists, we understand that when we say natural, that they have a universal motor recruitment pattern. Okay. The brain, as we always say in neurophysiotherapy, that these movements are something which the brain uh, records. Okay. So it's, it's not the muscles, it's the movements which get registered in the brain. Okay. So these are naturally occurring movements. Uh, a movement like a squat, a movement like a deadlift, a movement which is a press uh, are as integral to us as is wagging a tail for a dog as in jumping on branches for a monkey. Okay, so as human beings, uh, the squat, the deadlift, the push, the pull, the rotate, the single leg, okay, the walk, the run, the throw, the jump are movements which are a part of our human DNA. Okay, these are what I say is non-negotiable. These movements are what makes up our entire life. Okay, so that is one thing of the characteristic of functional movements is that they are naturally occurring movements. We are not going to invent a movement. We are not going to invent a movement. We are not going to invent a movement. Okay, we are not going to invent something. Okay, we are going to do movements which are absolutely natural. B is that they're essential. And this goes without saying is that 
if you think of rehab, you think of physiotherapy, what you see is that when you are treating, let's say, a 72-year female who has undergone a TKR, and what you would see is that she's sitting on a stool, okay? Just, yeah, she's sitting on a chair. And when she is made to stand up from a chair, what she will do, she will come to the edge of the chair, she will hold something, she will do a couple of attempts, and then she will stand up. Barabar kine. Okay, so what has happened, uh, what has happened is that she has lost the ability to do a squat. Okay, and that is the thing. This movement, if you, if you lose out your ability to do functional movements, you lose functional independence. And isn't that what physiotherapy or rehabilitation is all about? That is that if we are able to keep on doing functional movements throughout the life, we stay independent. Okay, uh, something such as uh, uh, our ability to get up or the squat is nothing but getting up from a chair, okay, or getting up from a commode. So if I'm able to squat, I will be able to get up from a chair independently. I will be able to uh, get up from the commode independently. Okay. Ability to do a deadlift is nothing but picking up a grocery bag from the floor. Okay. So if I'm able to do a deadlift, I will be able to pick up a grocery bag from the floor. Uh, shoulder press or a press is an exercise where you are pushing it up. So basically the ability to keep a dabba on the upper rack or keeping the dabba on the uh, upper shelf is something which is something which is going to happen only if you are able to uh, do a press. So all these movements are essential. Okay, that's the thing. So that is about uh, natural and essential movements. Okay. Now the third thing is that these movements are absolutely absolutely safe. Now safe to what? Safe is a relative term. Now safe to the non-functional movements. Okay. That way. So let's say let's say if you if you are making someone do an exercise which is completely non functional let's, let's say you make me do something like i don't know uh, 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 half of my body is hanging out of the bear, uh, something and i'm able to, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a extension which we typically see in gyms okay now these are movements which never happen in our normal life okay and that's why these movements are riskier riskier okay so the chance of you getting injured if you do functional movements, is much, much, much lower because these are safe movements. And the last point and very important point is that these movements are irreducible. Now, what I mean by irreducible is that uh, my brain recognizes the squat. My brain recognizes the deadlift. Okay. It doesn't really recognize what is happening in a squat. Okay. So if you see in a squat, I am able to, to yeah, uh, what I'm doing in a squat is I'm doing a uh, I'm doing hip flexion, knee flexion. As I come up, I'm doing knee extension and uh, hip extension. Okay. So my point is, ki, if you want your patient, your client to get better at squat, you can't be taking them on the bed and doing hip extension, alakse, knee extension, alakse, and expect them to be good at getting up from a chair. Getting it. This is something very important to understand. Is that although these movements are compound but they are irreducible. You cannot take one one component of these movements and train them individually and then expect the results to happen when you are doing them. And which we see in our uh, rehabilitation many a times, I'm very sure the experienced physicians who are there is that just because I'm able to do a knee extension doesn't mean that I will be able to stand up from a chair. If I want to stand up from a chair, the exercise you have to give me is standing up from a chair. Now, how you do that is something which we will discuss a, a little later. Okay, so we discuss functional movement, guys. Okay, because these are movements. ICF is something which we follow. Function is what we discuss in every case. <coughs> and what comprises of function are nothing but functional movements. And the functional movements, remember the four characteristics of functional movements. They are natural, essential, safe, and irreducible. Got it? Okay, so that is the functional movement. Now, what CrossFit does, it takes the functional movement and... Sorry. Okay. Okay. So what is happening? We, uh, is Yuraj, uh, we lost you in between. So if you could just. Yeah. Repeat. Am I fine now? Am yeah. I able to? Yeah. Okay. Chalo. Okay. So what CrossFit does, it, it takes functional movements and constantly varies them. Okay. So it will vary them between three categories, which is weightlifting, gymnastics, and metcon. Now, what is weightlifting? Okay. Come back to so the functional movements which come in weightlifting are your 
the squat, the deadlift, or the hip hinge, the push, or the shoulder press, the pull, the rotate, the single leg. Okay. In gymnastics, okay, gymnastics means nothing but your floor exercises. Okay. And now, if you look at gymnastics, you have exercises such as the push up, the pull up, the lunge, the dips, the climb, or the get ups. Okay. And the third category of uh, uh, functional movements are metcon. Okay. Now, what will happen in metcon? Metcon could be one way of saying cardio. Okay, would be run, throw, jump, bike, row, or swing. Okay, so what CrossFit will do, okay, is that it will take functional movements and vary them as much as possible. Okay, so a typical CrossFit session will consist of something like let's do five push ups, now let's do uh, five deadlifts, then let's do uh, five shoulder presses, okay, then let's do uh, 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 Let's say let's let's do uh, exercise such as a bent over rows five times. So we had four exercises, and now let's do this and let's repeat five sets of these four exercises. So what happens when you are repeating these exercises? Your metcon work is getting done. Okay, so you are getting a, a effect. You are getting an adaptation. You are triggering an adaptation in the body, which is cross sectional. Okay, so you are triggering an adaptation which is cross sectional across all the aspects of fitness. So if you look at aspects of fitness, are your strength, your flexibility, your stamina, okay, your agility, okay, uh, and and if you do CrossFit, you are targeting all the components of fitness cross sectionally. Okay, so in the same workout, uh, let's say if we do a squat, we do a squat with the barbell. Okay, we do a squat with loaded barbell. You are getting some effects on strength. Okay, then I said that we went for push-ups. Push-up is again a very good exercise to develop in strength. From that, we can go to something like a, a jump. Okay, now jump is going to help you develop power in your legs. Okay, from there we can do an exercise such as a, let's say a, 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 let's say a hip hinge or a deadlift. Deadlift, apart from being a strength exercise, is going to work nicely on the mobility of your posterior chain muscles. Okay, so in the same workout, you are getting advantages of strength, flexibility, agility, stamina, at the same time. Okay, and and all this we are going to do at high intensities. Okay, so basically, what is CrossFit? Is CrossFit is basically constantly varied functional movements performed at high intensity. Okay, and if you go to a CrossFit studio, okay, and you are kya kehte hain? You are typical CrossFit uh, uh, program with some look something like this. Okay, so on day one. You are doing a five kilometer run. Now, if you look at five kilometer run, it is nothing but a metcon exercise. Okay, uh, two day two, you will be doing five push-ups and five deadlifts at a high intensity. The deadlift would be given to you something like at let's say for females thirty kilos, for males it is fifty kilos. Okay, and so five push-ups, five deadlifts, you are doing five sets of this. Now, in this workout on day two, you have done gymnastics. That is a push-up. And you did weightlifting. Okay, first day, which was five kilometer run, was a metcon. Second day, you did gymnastics and weightlifting. Day three, it will get interesting. What we will do? We will make you do a four hundred meter ka run, followed by five pull-ups. We will do five thrusters. Okay, which is a squat and a shoulder press with twenty kilo, ten and ten kilo dumbbells. Okay, and so we did three exercises: run four hundred meters, five pull-ups, and five thrusters. We are going to perform. Uh, we are going to perform seven sets of that. The reason why uh, is going to, and this becomes a kind of a exercise where you are getting advantages of metabolic conditioning. You are getting advantages of uh, uh, gymnastics and weightlifting. Okay, the fourth day would be a off day. Okay, okay. The fifth day, what we are doing is we are not doing going to do anything metcon, but we are going to do gymnastics and we are going to do something like let us practice. Handstands. Okay, so this is what is I'm describing. What is happening in a CrossFit studio? I'm not describing what a physio should be doing. Okay, so don't worry about that. Okay, so day five typically is something like let's practice handstands. Day six would be a day for bench press. Okay, rows. Okay, and we do uh, bench press. Let's say we do five or six reps. We do five hundred meter rowing, and then we do five sets of this. So this becomes a day when you are doing a bit of weightlifting. And a bit of metcon. Okay, day seven. What we try to do is we take a deadlift as one exercise, and we do 
थ्री रेप सॉरी फाइव रेप्स थ्री रेप्स थ्री रेप्स टू रेप्स टू रेप्स वन रेप वन रेप मतलब वी स्टार्ट विथ लो लोड एंड फाइव रेप्स we increase the load we go to three reps we increase the load further we go to two reps we increase the load further we go to one rep okay so in the entire uh, session we just did lots of deadlift but at the end when we did then one rep probably that is the weight which becomes your one rm okay so this is the day when we did weight lifting so if you see if you go to a crossfit studio you will get a lot of fun workouts okay they will be constantly varied there not be a single day which is similar to the other day okay so you will have constantly varied functional movements which are performed at high intensity okay so that is in brief what crossfit is all about now comes to the second part of our presentation is that why do i think that this makes sense and the first and biggest thing which i think it makes sense is because of this word is that these movements are functional movements okay these movements are functional okay and as physios we always keep on talking about functional rehabilitation and this and that but i have not seen uh, much literature or lot of practicals being done about how do you actually make a person functionally independent okay we have been doing these movements at different intensities even in patients with hip fractures even in our patient with parkinsonism with fantastic results okay again understand we are not doing crossfit with them what we are doing we are doing functional movements okay so guys that is one element of crossfit like if you do this course if you read on crossfit and you will share some details about where you can get this information from you will realize that you are understanding functional movements in a lot of depth and that is the that is the gold part that is the beautiful part of crossfit it makes you understand the power of functional movements okay you don't need any fancy equipments you don't need heavy weights around you okay you can do movements uh, you can do this movement and still garner a lot of adaptations which make you independent which will keep your patients independent as long as possible okay the second thing which i love about crossfit is that it has taken functional movements such as a such as a squat or a deadlift and it is completely kya kehte hain dwell deep into it okay it tells a lot about the right technique of doing a squat like i did four and half years of ed graduate education three years of masters then i was a lecturer for seven years and believe me till that point i didn't have much clarity about how do you do a perfect squat like everybody used to come with their own opinions okay if i follow one school second school third school okay but when i did crossfit it made me understand what should be a perfect squat now at the same time unlike other courses it doesn't say that just because you are not able to do a perfect squat you should give up on squatting okay and it doesn't say that squat is something which you use to strengthen your muscles okay squat is a function okay what it talks about a lot is that if your patient is not able to do a perfect squat how do you regress it okay how do you regress it immediately bring it down okay so it becomes easier okay at the same time if a patient able to do a squat how do you immediately progress it so this clarity this this amazing clarity i could get after doing the crossfit course okay so it gives you in detail about how do you how do you do a perfect functional movement okay now if something is wrong okay how how do you make it easier for the client and how do you make it more difficult and, and if this any patient is able to do that how do you make it more challenging for your client okay same applies to the deadlift the shoulder press the pulls the push ups sab ke liye they will give you a list of regressions and a list of progressions okay so that is about uh, why i absolutely absolutely uh love prospect okay uh, that way again understand okay I, am i doing crossfit crossfit when i'm doing rehabilitation probably no am i doing functional movements yes okay i think the most results which we are getting uh, is because of we are using functional movements in our rehab okay uh and then uh, comes the part of how do we use crossfit in rehabilitation okay that's it okay yes yeah okay so let's 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 take an example yahan pe okay uh, let's take an example of uh, 
let's say there is a lady, a old lady who comes to us with knee pain. Okay, a knee pain, and she is, has difficulty in doing sit to stand. Okay, now if that is the problem which she is having, so can you get me a chair and the pillow also? Okay. Yeah. So we will have to move a little behind. So let's say Masumi is that patient, negative it does. You want to fit it. Okay. So let's say. Okay, so Masumi sit on the chair. So let's say Masumi is the patient who has difficulty in doing sit to stand. Okay, so this is where she, most of our patients with ONE would say, you know, I'm having difficulty in doing sit to stand. Yes, if they have pain, if they have mobility impairments, I'm not saying your exercises, your your ultrasound, your diathermy. Your needling taping is wrong. No, bilkulli. for pain management, those are the right things. Okay. I'm still saying there is a role for static quadriceps, for your gland shells. Those are done for other purposes. What I do is that if I'm going to recommend six exercises, I will ensure at least two or three of them are functional movements. Okay. So I would, if the patient comes on day one to me and says, Ki, sir, I have difficulty in doing sit to stand. I know difficult. I get knee pain. On standing up from a chair, what I will do, I will put her on probably clamshells. I will probably give her some hip rotations in lying position, but I will definitely show her the same exercise which she said, Ki, okay, I have difficulty standing up from chair. What I do is get up and I would say, sit on this. Okay, now sit on this, stay there. Okay, have shoulder width distance between your feet. Feet turn slightly outwards. Sit there at the edge of the chair. Okay, and now stand up from this side and I do stand up, squeeze your glutes. Okay, and sit down again. Got it. So we use the same functional movement. Now, if this is also painful, I might probably add one more uh, pillow. Okay, so I increase the height, but I use the same functional movement because as we discuss, the brain remembers movement and if you're rehabilitating, then you better use that. Now you start with that. Okay, you continue with your pain management, continue with your manual therapy. Okay, continue with this functional movement. And probably after a few sessions, you remove out the pillow. Okay. And now Masumi sit on this. Okay. So that is when you start feeling that patients are feeling, you know what, sir, now I'm able to stand, sit up from the chair. But that's not the end of it. Because in exercise therapy, there are two principles which I strongly believe in your exercises have to be functional and exercises have to be overloaded. Okay. Now explain, let's, let's, let's look at how can the same exercise be overloaded. So what we do now is we remove this out and we take a lower surface. Okay. So instead of a chair, which is probably 18 inches, I am taking something which is 12 inches. Okay. Now I'm going to make her do squat on a low chair. Okay. Sit down. Yeah. Wonderful. And get up again. And as you get up, squeeze your glutes and sit down again. That's great. Okay. Now if Masumi or if the patient, sorry, not Masumi. Okay. The patient is able to do this quite nicely, get up, remove out the uh, box now. Okay, remove out the box. And what do we tell them to do now? So now we make them do a uh, air squat. Now, the, the, now, now you face in the mirror. Okay, now face in the mirror. Yeah. Now it is important for us to understand the right mechanics of doing the air squat. Okay, the mechanics are having the shoulder width distance between the feet. Feet turn slightly outwards. Beautiful. Okay, abs in, abs contracted. Hands at 120 degrees, okay? So look at the horizon and start the movement from your hip and go down and keep on going down, keep on going down, keep on going down, keep on going down, yeah, and get up, okay? And squeeze your glutes, okay? Now, this exercise may be used, may not be used for a patient depending upon uh, the age of the patient or other things, but this would be an overload training which I would give to a patient who is able to do sit to stand from a low surface. Okay, so that becomes a yes. But now understand, now when we are reaching the perfect way of doing this, okay, let's say this one. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, come here. Okay, now let's say. So if. if this is yeah. not a toy. Back, back. Yeah. yeah. So, what we, so what we do is now once we understand the right, now if let, let's say, so let's look at Masumi doing the yes. One more time. Okay, with the knee inside. Go down. Yeah. So let's say there would be a few movement impairments which CrossFit talks about 
which you should be able to identify when your patients are doing functional movement. Let's say if she is doing the functional movement and her knees are caving in, okay, you should be immediately able to correct this during the movement. So there is no point of taking them, like we all understand who all are here, that this is happening because probably poor eccentric control of your glute meds, glute max. Okay. But for that, we don't have to take them in a supine position, side length position and train that. We can just ask her, you know what, Masumi, as you go down, push your knees against my hand and you go down. Yeah, that's good. Go down, 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 and then come up. Okay. So this could be one cue which I can give or I can ask her to tie a theraband around the knees, stretch the theraband as she goes down. Okay. The second fault which can happen, let's say, when she's doing the squat would be excessive bending from the back. Okay. So as she goes down, and if you see, most of them would be bending a lot from that. means she's losing the natural curve of the spine. Now, if that is happening, okay, then that can be corrected. Okay. For example, I can give her a physical cue. I can give her a physical cue. Like, Masumi, when you're doing this, you should not touch. Yeah. Yes. I guess that's it. Yeah. So when you're doing this, don't touch the rod. Okay. And go down. Yeah. Go down. 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 Yeah. Beautiful. And come up. Okay. So this could be done. Okay. At the same time, I can just give Masumi a TheraBand. Ask Masumi to hold the stretch the TheraBand nicely and then do the squat. Yeah. Masumi will show that to us. Yes. Yeah. Go. Yeah. So what happens when she is stretching the TheraBand, she is engaging her upper back muscles. Okay. That is going to ensure her spine doesn't collapse when she's going into a squat. Nice. And come up. Okay. So what if, if you, if you read CrossFit, if you go through CrossFit, uh, it will talk a lot about assessing movements. Okay. And when you assess movements, it talks a lot about uh, what are things you need to observe when you see them doing the functional movements. Okay. Like they would talk about six pointers. They will talk about when you are doing those functional movements, are you having a neutral spine? Okay. B would be, are you having a full range of motion of that movement? Okay. For a squat, you should be able to take your buttocks below the knee. And if you are doing a deadlift, you should be able to touch the mid shin level. Okay. Three, it will talk about, uh, it will talk about uh, when you're doing the movement, are you having a good stability in the frontal plane? Like, for example, Masumi's issue, for example, of cave, the knees caving in was a clear example of not having very good frontal plane stability. Okay. It will talk about when you're doing the movement, do you have an active shoulder? Now, what is active shoulder? Is like when I'm doing a squat or when I'm doing a shoulder press, okay, are my hands remain straight? Or are they getting loose as I'm going down? Okay. Or let's say if I'm doing a shoulder press, am I able to go full up or am I stopping here? Okay. Now for physios, we can always say that active shoulder could be because of lat tightness. It could be because of poor activation, serratus anterior and so on. But in terms of movement, what we need to see grossly is that, is it, are you getting an active shoulder? Now, if you're able to identify that, that my patient doesn't have an active shoulder when he's doing a squat or a shoulder press, then the sky is the limit. For you and me as physios, we can discuss about stretches to satisfaction dorsal and some activation of serratus anterior. At the same time, we do functional movements. Okay. And fifth point would be, is the patient moving from core to extremity? That means is, when she's moving, am I, am I starting the movement from my hips and then going down? Or am I starting the moving from my knee and then going down? Okay. So generally, functional movements have to initiate from my uh, core and then the movement is flowing towards my extremity. If I'm throwing a ball, okay, if I'm throwing a ball, where is the power coming from? Is it coming from my core and then going to my hand or is the movement coming from my hand? Okay, so these are the characteristics of me. Like let's say if I'm playing badminton tomorrow, okay, and if I'm playing a shot, okay, what is going to happen is that if, 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 when I'm playing that smash or playing the shot, where is the movement coming from? Is it coming from my core and then my extremities move? Or is the movement coming only from my extremity? Now, what you will understand is that most of the injuries are going to happen if I'm uh, ignoring the rules of functional movements, which is basically that is they have to go flow from your core towards your extremity. Okay. So that is how we are using CrossFit for muscular patients 
we do also use principles of crossfit when we see sports clients okay now the thing is is that there is a lot of uh, uh, kya kehte hai uh, confusion about when i see a patient with sports injury i should straight away discuss exercises which are sport specific okay guys we need to understand uh, most of the clients who come to us even the sports clients and what we have seen is that they don't have competency or ability to do firstly perform good functional movements now if you don't have this it is going to be very difficult for you to excel at your sports okay so always concentrate first on this and once this foundation is formed then you go ahead and discuss sport specific movements okay which you can get from other schools of thought okay but your ability to do a squat a deadlift a push press a, sorry a shoulder press a pull a push up a pull up a jump okay throwing running climbing these things should be there in all of us and definitely you are clients with sports injuries okay that way agar ye cheeze jagah pe hai it could do wonders aur agar ye cheeze jagah pe nahi hai we as physio should be able to identify ki these are not in place and then we can discuss about uh what can be done how do and then we should be able to know like this is we should be able to if they are not in place how am i going to train them okay of of like i i we hear a lot of physios going to sports academies and other places and discussing training specific muscles and that is not how movements happen guys okay because your sports movements are nothing but progression from your functional movements okay so you cannot go to a let's say a football academy and tell them ki i want you guys to practice uh, i don't know i don't know uh, adductor strengthening exercises okay yes wo zaruri hoga but you are going to use your adductors in different way like let's say if i am doing a single leg activity let let's see a single leg if i am doing a single leg deadlift for example okay this is so my adductors are going to be used to stabilize my pelvis okay so what you need to understand is uh kya kehte ki first get them competent in doing the functional movements and then you will start discussing sport specific activities okay pranay you want to add anything before we start taking the questions uh no i think most of the points were covered but uh, that's what we want uh, most of the physios who are listening here uh, mm -hmm. to understand that you should not shy away from using these movements mm -hmm. into your rehab we have mm -hmm. one very good question which has been asked asking about how do you know when can you start so i think you take up that i question. think i think yeah so i think crossfit is something which is there for everyone so yeah we have to see two three things i will tell you because i read the other manses question also the first thing is crossfit is for everyone we we have people as old as 70 80 years old also i have seen them doing crossfit how much to do you as a therapist or you as a coach have to be smart enough to understand that okay and we are discussing today mainly here is how do we use crossfit in rehabilitation okay so i think it has far reaching effects and i feel this is one school of thought which discusses functional movements in absolute absolute depth okay and we can immediately start using them in our musculoskeletal rehabilitation that is one thing which uh, which i would i would say okay so when can you start start the immediately we have uh, like if you ever come to positive you will see literally everyone doing this movements okay and i have not seen in last 3 years since we have started doing crossfit anyone ever tell me that my pain has got aggravated because of doing crossfit that way okay that way second question is uh, we have to see ek cheez hai ki yes 1 rm and we see a lot of fancy books discussing how do you calculate 1 rm and what is the definition of cardio exercises or stamina aerobic and anaerobic okay which is okay from the point of view of exercise physiology okay but when it comes to uh, kya kehte hai real life okay uh, i think we have to blur the distinction between weight lifting gymnastics and metcon okay because in real life you are not going to have a challenge which is like let's say if i want to pick a load of 20 kilos of books and carry it up two flights of stairs where do i fit in is it a pure metcon exercise 
or is it a weight lifting exercise getting my point okay it it's going to be a bit of both okay so what crossfit does is that it is not really bothered about your textbook definitions of 1rm or how do you calculate 1rm okay uh, or how do you uh, kya kehte hai uh, uh, because that's not the that's not the focus of crossfit okay probably if you want to calculate 1rm you have a protocol which you can follow but when it comes to training you to be functionally fit okay this is something which is which is what we uh, try to do uh, it, like like i again say i think this 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 is the issue which we have seen is that uh, uh, what i'm saying is that ki uh, there is this article which uh, i will share it on the groups which is from the canadian uh, government where they talk about long term athlete development aur unhone ne bahut acche se diya hai ki when you take a person for develop or you will you take a person to make them competent in sports okay and they say ki everybody should play sport everybody should be active you have to categorize them into what are you doing are you training them to be competent at sports movements or are you training them so that they can uh, uh, train or are you training them so that they win okay now when we discuss i think most of physio discussions uh, sadly are happening at a uh, training to win category mein okay okay and that category believe me is less than 5% okay a bigger issue is is that how do we make these people competent at the basic sports movements and i will ask you to go and look at your patients who are apparently playing probably state level badminton or something else and you would see that they will have deficiencies in squats they might have deficiencies in a pull up and they might have deficiencies in uh i don't know a jump probably okay a box jump or a depth jump okay and then the question arises is why am i so focused on 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 one particular thing let me get his competence in movement first because as this person gets competent in doing the functional movements he is getting more safer in his sport and then i can once this competence is developed then i will go towards making him stronger for his sport then i will start discussing sport specific exercises okay so what happens whenever there is a disc- whenever we go to conferences or whenever there is an instagram video of badminton exercises everybody will discuss three exercises which are good for badminton okay but we forget the basic thing is that ki if you are looking at badminton ka shot let's say this is a shot of badminton okay uh yeah, let's say that is coming from a functional movement so let's say your ability to do a perfect shoulder press is one thing from there you are going to ability to do a perfect push press jahan pe now you are starting to integrate uh kya kehte hai legs along with hands okay and then your ability to do a perfect push jerk okay then comes is your ability to to do a medicine ball throw तो अगर आप देखोगे कि वंस यू आर एबल टू डू मेडिसिन बॉल थ्रो यू आर डेवलपिंग अ लॉट ऑफ कॉम्पिटेंसी इन द स्ट्रक्चर्स व्हिच आर गोइंग टू हेल्प यू डू अ गुड शॉट ओके और यू स्टार्टेड विथ शोल्डर प्रेस शोल्डर प्रेस पुश प्रेस थ्रो एंड देन यू क्या कहते हैं जो भी Now able to take a lot of weight when you are doing badminton. Let's look at the same person. Says somebody comes and says you, sir, I am not able. Whenever I land, I land wrong, or I am not able to uh, jump higher. Now you have to understand, jump is arising from a squat. Okay, so Jin's bande ko jab wo squat kar raha hai, okay, and he is able, he is he is lifting his knees up. Okay, ye banda that means basically he doesn't have a full range of motion of a squat. He probably is using a lot of anterior chain while doing the squat. Okay, he is not using a lot of his back chain when he was doing the squat. This person will always have a weak jump. Now, for this person to jump good, firstly he should be able to do a perfect squat. Now, perfect squat goes forwards, goes into a perfect squat jump. Okay, and perfect squat jump probably will lead to a perfect plyo jump, a jump. Okay, and then you can discuss plyometric exercises. the problem arises is that we straight away take a person who is not able to jump into either plyometric training okay without looking at the fundamentals okay so that is uh, what uh, is something which we want to see ruchira ma'am is there pragna for this 
Yeah, she's there. Ma'am, you want to say something about this, about fundamental movements? It will be great to hear from you. The fundamentals of sports, yeah. Somebody from Akhada had definitely joined in. Okay, okay, okay. Chalo, koi baat. If ma'am is there, she will join. Okay. So that is what uh, I feel is that kahan pe hum log physios galat ja rahe hai is that we are looking at fancy stuff too soon. Okay. And none of our textbooks. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, sorry. sir. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Ruchira ma'am, just a five, five minute ago, there was kind of like she just left. Okay. Yeah. But uh, sir, you want to share anything about how this function, this fundamental is important before you go to something higher intensity? I, 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 uh, about high intensity, I don't know how, uh, what way it will be applicable uh, in, in the world of physio, basically. Mm. But uh, yeah, functional movement is what we can uh, take home from uh, CrossFit. Otherwise, yeah. all this movement uh, has been happening for a very long time in, uh, in other kind of fitness as well. Mm. But, uh, you know, uh, understanding the basic first and then uh, uh, jumping into the Metcon or... Uh, other intensity would be a good idea. You know, yeah. uh, looking directly into the CrossFit videos might scare you a bit, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if, if you look from the movement point of view, it, it will become easier for you. Otherwise, yeah. uh, CrossFit is all about high intensity and all those stuff where yeah. uh, even the form and technique goes for a toss once yeah. uh, those athletes get tired. So, yeah. you know, in the 10th minute, 11th minute, uh, okay. what, what uh, the only thing uh, in their mind is to just finish that workout in the given time or the task yeah. to finish the task. But uh, paying attention to the movement, the form, the technique, uh, I think uh, will be the key here rather than yeah. looking at the Metcon or looking at the overall exercise, I would say. Uh, that, that, that will be my take on this. Uh, otherwise, they, are, they, they have made it very simple. Yeah. They have uh, the movements and everything, the progression and regression, uh, they, they have given it beautifully, you know? The push, pull, the hinge and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would suggest, yeah, yeah uh, understanding movement rather than the whole workout. If you see the videos of CrossFit and all, uh, it, 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 it will might scare you as well. Mm. Uh, take it step by step, I would say, from, from movement's perspective, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 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 So Shailesh sir, thank you so much. Shailesh sir is a level two CrossFit trainer and whatever we have learned has come from a lot of Shailesh sir and Ruchira ma'am's uh, inputs. Yeah. So I think that is the thing. But but uh, because knowing us is that one thing which I would say is that even when I used to read, when I should teach sports physiotherapy in MGM, I realized uh, we discuss fancy things first without looking at the uh, fundamentals. Yeah. Uh, you want to add anything, Pradnya, specifically on this? Your experiences? Uh, no, so as uh, fundamentals, uh, we were equally ignoring them for quite some time. So I would say that I myself have been starting to use these movements uh, recently, say about two years. And uh, even if what we hesitate is how would we put our patients through these movements if they are in pain? I'm very sure mm -hmm. most of us hesitate and get scared because of pain as a limiting factor. But as uh, Yuraj very rightly said, there are levels in which you can scale down the exercises or mm -hmm. use your low intensity exercises to begin with and then slowly, gradually build up. But until and unless you don't get them moving the way they should or they are supposed to be, your yeah. rehab is never going to be complete. And they're going to sure. come back to you after say six months, eight months, but they're going to come back to you. Yeah. Uh, there was this one question by Sidra. So where do you get the reading materials? So I think the CrossFit manual. Yeah. So you can just look up for it. It's available. And if it is possible, I will share it. Is that the level one CrossFit manual is, manual is available, uh, open source. Man. And uh, what we have done is we have taken the six fundamental movements and we have broken them into uh, easier regressions. So I will share those videos also with you. Uh, that is the thing. The takeaway message, guys, would be A is that uh, please read the CrossFit level one journal, uh, the manual. And I'll share that. Uh, the reason being is that we need to understand uh, functional movements better. And you know, when I was reading to the CrossFit uh, level one journal, and I realized that all the research they are quoting 
is coming from neurophysiotherapy. Okay, talking about functional movement, we're talking about movement, we're talking about brain recognizing movements and not recognizing patterns and not recognizing muscles. Okay, and I felt so good, but I felt kahi na kahi to ek hi bhai are we muscular physios not listening to our friends from neuro? Okay, is that ki yeah these guys are making sense? Okay, so they talk a lot of that. So a lot of CrossFit ka functional movement ka research is from physiotherapy, and that's why I feel. This combination is fantastic. If you are a muscular physiotherapist, you will. There is a lot to absorb from CrossFit. Okay, CrossFit in the purest form. I'm not talking about CrossFit as Shailesh was saying. The CrossFit game that is for elite athletes. Okay, B would be is that is that start start using functional movements in your rehabilitation. Be it a patient with knee pain, back pain. Uh, be it a patient with uh, TKR or hip fracture. Uh, and we will discuss that. Key. These movements can be, should be used, not can be used, should be used in uh, all of your uh, patients. Per se, that way. And as we go into more uh, aggressive exercises, such as you have your sports clients or you have your clients with uh, who are active, rather than going for fancy exercises, try to see are they able to do your functional movements properly first, and then then start loading the functional movements. And if that is possible, then start discussing. Specific exercise and sports specific exercises are do be in that way. Okay, so one rule of CrossFit is to keep the session short and intense. So I am keeping it short and intense. Are there any other questions? Otherwise, we wrap up and I will share the material with you. Yeah, cool guys. Yeah, I will share the material with you and also the video with you. Keep asking questions. If not here. Uh, the introverts can ask the question later. You can DM us like directly, or you can ask it on the nurse body group. Okay. So until the next session, we see you soon, guys. Okay. Bye. Good night.